you're saying Fedora's had issues over the years with, like, especially early on. But, like, one of the things that Fedora, I've noticed, does fairly often is adopting new technologies probably a little bit before they're ready. Like, Wayland, for example, was Fedora 21 when that was brought in with Gnome. Yeah. Then Pipewai back in 2021, you guys were looking at it. Yeah. It's a careful balance. I mean, mm -hmm. we definitely have in our mission, and this partly comes from um, the split from Rel, where mm -hmm. this used to, like um, Fedora is supposed to be fast moving, mm -hmm. but it's also it's not. I you know, um, I I think we'd keep it because it's a it's a good place to be. People kind of want want new things quickly, mm -hmm. um, but we try not to be. I, I whenever somebody says bleeding edge, I. Yeah. kind of cringe i would like to be leading edge i'm an I art like user to... i feel the same way <laughs> right i'd like to not be um you, you'd be bleeding let's 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 yeah, stay no. leading and that's one of the reasons we we you do still put out releases rather than having um being a, a rolling release because mm -hmm. we want to have you know kind of a c control over all this integration we do of all this change that's coming in um but there's also a, a thing where um, if someone doesn't do it at mm. scale, it will never be ready. Right. And so, uh, you know, with Wayland, um, you know, I, I think it, it wasn't perfect when we put it there, but we tried to make sure we tried to make sure that you know if there was a problem, it was easy for you to fall back. Right, to right. Um, and that, and so we had that option there. Um, and and I think that without that that wide exposure, it wouldn't have had you know, mm -hmm. the ability to bake and improve. So yeah, um, you know, we kind of. Uh, we kind of take that for mm -hmm. uh, um, everybody else, and you know that that's okay. Um, See, the problem is you you know the position you're in, and you're a bit too nice with like the how you describe the project. The answer is it was terrible then, but you're not well, going to say that. Yeah, you know, some 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 of it might have been, um, but, but we try we try to learn from each of the things. So yeah, I think one yeah, of the yeah. big things, and this is a kind of a central thing in my uh, talk. Uh, that I, I'm pitching the DevCon talk. Mm -hmm. um, when we did uh, Fedora like number fifteen, uh -huh. that was uh, it went to both switching to System D and GNOME three at okay. the same release, and we lost half of our users. Um, that was just too big change. And yeah, I think yeah. you know, in retrospect, those are both great projects, great technology, sure, sure. and were the right things to do, but wow too much all at once and yeah. so when we've made other big changes in both fedora and like gnome as an upstream so like the change in gnome 40 to way the way switching to you know horizontal rather than vertical desktop layout and mm -hmm. like a pretty big ui change uh, we put uh, some work into doing ux research with actual human beings rather mm -hmm. than you know, uh, like a theory and getting feedback and you know it's not a perfect change for everyone but that went very smoothly compared and i think you know, it didn't didn't cause that same distress mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i think you know we obviously in retrospect we could have made the system d change go a lot more smoothly um, yeah yeah but um you know there's some excitement for the new and you know things things are going to break sometimes uh one thing you can do and i know people who do this um we we do keep two releases current this is part of what i was saying about the release yeah. model so you know we just came out with Fedora Linux 38, but mm -hmm. Fedora Linux 37 is still supported. Uh, we have uh, it's basically seven months of overlap there. Right. Um, so you can basically stay one release behind, upgrade every year, and um, have a much less dramatic experience, mm -hmm. but still be kind of close to the newer things, if that's what, what you prefer. <clears throat> um, that's what I like doing with my, my hardware. Like I always buy a GPU, the generation behind, then all the driver issues and all the, like everything else is going to get sorted out by the time I upgrade. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it's kind of a similar thing to that. And, you know, if that, that, that ends up still being uh, too too fast for you, um, you know, there is you know, sent to a stream, which I think is actually a good option for a lot of people. I won't go into too much depth about that because that's its whole own talk, mm -hmm. um, you know, or RHEL. Uh, there is RHEL is available. You can have 16 licenses as an individual for to use for whatever you want in production. Um, I think that's a great choice, especially if you're looking at a career mm -hmm. or if you're just a small thing and you want to have a production server, um, you know, or, you know, there's other distributions that do other things. Those are, those are out there, out, out there as well. <laughs> um, it all, I, it's, it's all Linux. It's all good. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I do think we want to make Fedora 
uh, you know, people who are using Fedora Linux should have a good, confident experience in it, and it should um, should feel safe to use as your daily driver, and mm -hmm. you shouldn't expect it to break on you. I think right. that's that's fair, mm -hmm. um, and we should expect that big changes are handled in a way that makes them um, that at least you have a way to adjust things to fall back, um, even if there is something that is new. Well, speaking of big changes, I know there's been some like m discussions about possibly GTK five being like it it's still a while away, but like GTK five being Wayland only. Um, and when that ha if that happens, that means GNOME at that point is going to be Wayland only. Uh, this is probably a five or so plus yeah. years into the future, but I feel like that is going to be a really difficult transition because Wayland is eventually going to happen. Like this is this is just yeah. the direction we're going, but it's going to be another one of those system D sort of changes where there's going to be a, a bit of resistance. But I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, know what you think I, I think. It. I think if it's five years, if you put it at five years in the future, I don't think there'll be, I don't think anybody will notice, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I I used to, you know, when we made that change, I used to try Wayland every new release, and then, then three days later, I'd be back on X. And somewhere along the line, and I don't know when, I stopped doing that, and mm -hmm. now I've just, oh yeah, I guess I'm a Wayland user now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, that work has been done. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, right now, there are you know maybe some like network, um, remote network use cases and things yeah, where sure. um, people use X, but X is actually not very good for that because it was designed to be used on a university network with no security uh, and all these different right um and, and and not the way people want to use it. Yeah, um, one of the comments so, I, I usually get comments yeah. about like you know network transparency every time I do I bring up Wayland, but. Yeah. I get a lot. While well, I get a lot of people saying it, I don't know how many people that's actually a use case for. Like, especially in the X sort of format of doing it. Right. Yeah. Um. It's it's actually, unless you have a very high speed link between your systems, it's a very chatty protocol and mm -hmm. uh, not great. So you're better off using. Uh. You know. I don't know if the no machine thing is still around, but mm -hmm. also you know just the um, you know VNC kind of approach to things is actually better um, and i think that's probably what's going to happen with i mean there's there's work on things like that mm. for wayland uh yeah um, um i think it's just called i don't Ray know the BNC, details but, i want to say yeah but i i honestly believe that um if it's if it's five years from now no one will notice or uh, if it, you I, I think even three years from now it'll be so smooth there won't be a uh, people will be whatever now yeah no if it's like you know one year from now everybody's there yeah um you know then some people will be uh grumpy but I, even that i don't think it is that kind of gigantic system d kind of change mm -hmm. um more like a pipeline sort of change where it's yeah, yeah maybe yeah um uh, and hopefully a more more smoothed out pipeware than the first couple releases. It was a um, little rough, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I sort of migrated but, but, fairly early on as well, and a couple of those updates that came through, especially being on Arch, a couple of those updates that came through, I was like, you know, today we're going back to Pulse Audio for a little bit. Yeah, I, I didn't have much needing to go back, but I did have a lot of, like, restarting my audio. Um, oh, yep, well, just going to have a little script running in the background, restarting my audio every five minutes, just in case I... Yeah, uh, but my um, main concern was because of the video production stuff. I had some issues with OBS early yeah. on. Um, that was the my main yeah. concern because uh, I would have sometimes like audio tracks would like the different audio sources would merge together. Like my mic and my desktop audio would just be the same thing, and I didn't know why. Interesting. It's what I need to find out now. I have I have um, three monitors here. Yeah, um, I do as well. And uh, one of them has speakers on it, which I mm -hmm. sometimes use when I'm tired of my headphones. Mm -hmm. um, but the other two do not. But they're both HDMI, you know, things. So they show up on my audio list. And I just need to figure out how to tell it, never show me that. And I do not understand the syntax 